Okay, so I had a little issue with my machine recently. Now that that's finally fixed, I feel comfortable moving forward with Alice Pestle. <laughs> Most of these things are fairly simple. Honestly, I think the most difficult piece is going to be the bodice. But we're not doing the bodice right now. We are doing her shift. And y'all will have already seen me pattern it. So now that I have the shift pattern done, I can cut it in muslin and sew it up and see how well it fits so that I can make whatever necessary adjustments I need. Let's roll out some muslin and get this pattern cut, shall we? <laughs> is cut and I have been marking the half inch allowance on a few of them. I basically just sew it together. One of the choices that I made here, I cut the gussets as a single piece and then cut them apart into the triangles from there just to keep the square of the corners. I also have cut the body, the front and the back together as one piece with no neck opening because I know I'm gonna have to do some adjustment for where exactly I want the neckline once I have the bodice made. So I might have to make two mock-ups at once and try them together to see what I really want to do here. The tutorial that I am following, which is specifically the 17th century Italian chemise instructions, at least as far as the order of operations for sewing it all together. But like shifts and chemises stay pretty standardly the same for most of the time that they are so ubiquitous. But this is the How to Make an Easy Italian Chemise article from Festive Attire Historical Costuming. I will put a link in the description. The author of this particular article has you attach the gussets to the sleeves, then attach the sleeves and gussets to the body, then sew up the sides from sleeve cuff to body hem. Then do the hem, then finish the neckline, which I think I'll just do a simple binding, though I'm not gonna be doing any finishing on the maca, simply because I have to figure out exactly how low the neckline needs to be. We're gonna do everything except the neckline finishing, and then probably cut out and make a mock-up of a bodice after this. Let's get to some sewing. So gussets to sleeves, let's go. as far as it needed to be to try it on. And I tried to pull it on. And um, this section 
right here where the underarm gussets meet the top of the side gores was much too narrow. Too narrow, in fact, to pull over my shoulders and actually get it all the way on. So this version is a bust. And unfortunately, though I would like to revisit this in the future and actually, you know, make the pattern myself from scratch and then the shift from scratch. I don't know how to address this issue and I don't have time to figure out how to redo my pattern because the deadline to get this done to still be able to be in Renfest this year is much closer than I initially thought. I thought that the deadline was toward the end of October. Turns out it is before mid-September. So <laughs> I have a month less to get all this done. Thus, I have found a different pattern making method for a shift from the 16th century and I'm going to be using that where all it does is take the width of your fabric and you cut it in half and that is your loom width. That is the width of the main body pieces, front and back, as well as the width of the sleeves. And from there you plug in the length that you need from neck to right about the middle of your shin, and the length of your arm from your shoulder point to your wrist over your bent elbow, and then a 10 inch by 10 inch gusset, just like I did, so I can reuse that, and then um, a strip to bind the neckline. So that is what I'm going to be following. and. I I will probably make another mock-up, though my muslin is narrower than the linen I'm going to be using, so we will see how well that works. In the meantime, uh, while I wait for the linen, I am also going to be working on mock-ups for everything else because I'm going to have to knock out as many kinks as possible before the linen gets here. I am using commercial patterns for basically all of these pieces because again, I don't have time to draft the patterns myself, play with some mock-ups to get the fit just right, and then make the final garment. I am planning on revisiting this in the future to really make this the way that I have envisioned it for Alice, but for now, this is what we've got. So for her petticoat and her top skirt, I am using pattern B from Angela Clayton's McCall's pattern. This is M7763. I've had this pattern for a while and while the entire pattern is meant for a higher class lady of the Renaissance, she does have this portion that is just the lower skirt with some straps to hold it up on your shoulders. So what I am doing is I am mixing the straps and using just the skirt and I will probably, I'm going to make the petticoat slightly shorter than the regular skirt, only slightly. It'll be like an inch or two off hem length wise so that you can still see a pop of it here and there. I am using Butterick B4669 for the bodice, specifically style A, because it's the simplest version and makes the most sense for me and for this character. That should be pretty simple. This one's gonna be tricky because I'm gonna have to customize the fit for my bust and my waist, which do not fit in a single pattern size. I am having to combine the 14 and the 18 together. But it shouldn't be too difficult because those are not too terribly far. There's one size in between them, obviously, if you can do math. The only really tricky part is going to be figuring out boning because I would like this to be a bit more structured. I have wooden boning. So I'm hoping that I can work boning channels into the bodice along the seams and have that provide a little bit extra structure. I may also put, I'll probably also put some boning right inside the eyelets for the lacing. In fact, I may sandwich the eyelets between bones. And then I'm also making an apron for Alice because she's an apothecary. She works with a lot of things and it gets messy and she wants to have, she doesn't want to have to launder her skirts quite as often. So she needs an apron. So I have another Butterick pattern, 5509, which is all aprons. And I am again using style A. It is the simplest one. It makes the most sense for the period. This one's going to be pretty much exactly as it is on the pattern. I'll make the size that works for my waist and we will go from there. And that will be, uh, again, slightly shorter than my outer skirt, but not too terribly short. Lastly, well, I say lastly, there's a couple more things that I need to make. I am gonna have to draft, I will probably follow Morgan Donner's video and I think a couple other people did it for um, a little linen cap because unfortunately I will have to cover my hair. Even, even if I didn't have this coloring, I would have to 
to pull up my hair and cover it because it's long and I'm unmarried and a number of other reasons. So that is gonna be out of the same off-white linen that I'm using for the shift and the apron. And it doesn't take a lot of linen. So I will be figuring out that pattern as soon as possible. I'm gonna bust out these things that I have patterns for first and, and bust out these mock-ups. Honestly, I'm even debating just skipping the mock-up phase for the apron and for the skirts because they're skirts, you know? Well, actually what I might do, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a mock, a, a half-length mock-up for the skirts so I can figure out how to make a bound opening in the, the side seams so that I can get to a pocket underneath. Because what I'm what I'm planning on doing for her, I'm gonna have to be carrying a lot of things and I don't want them just suspended loosely under the skirts with lanyards and things, because there's a way to get around that. I am going to make a pair of tie-on pockets because they did exist even that early in history. They wouldn't have been very complex. They wouldn't have looked the way that 17th, 18th, 19th century pockets looked, but they existed. So I am planning on making some pouches to go on her belt. Um, one of these styles, probably this style because it's a little bit more feminine, but I was going to make a very simple set of tie-on pockets to go underneath her skirt and her petticoat so that I can hold things like my money and my ID and any other absolute necessities that are anachronistic to the Renaissance a little more securely than just having them in a something that's visible or suspended loosely, like I said, underneath the skirt. Because I would be devastated if a clip or a snap or a hook or something decided to give way while I was walking around Renfest and suddenly my driver's license is lost amongst the gravel and nobody knows who to give it to because I'm in costume, you can't see my hair. On top of which, my photo on my driver's license is me from like 2016 when I still had a pixie cut. So, so yeah, I'm making tie-on pockets and then I'm gonna make either I or H. I don't see the difference, hang on. The difference between H and I seems to be whether or not you used a patterned fabric. They are the exact same pattern. I may even make one of each, one of the FG patterns here and then one of the H and I patterns. We will see. For now, I am focusing on mock-ups so that I understand how things go together. I mainly need the bodice mocked up. I will probably do a skirt so I can figure out the pocket opening, and then I need the cap. I will also go ahead and make a fresh mock-up of the new shift pattern so I can get a feel for how it's gonna fit because it'll be very different. And I need to figure out what I'm doing with the neckline before the actual linen gets here and I messed that up. That's where we are today. I I am cutting out patterns and muslin for patterns and we will go from there. I already ordered the linen. I have a very pretty heathered pale blue. It's like a pale denim blue and a dark solid gray, dark-ish. It's like a mid-tone, medium weight gray linen. Those are for the pieces that you will see the most of. Well, I say you see the most of. I am making the bodice and the top skirt out of the blue and I figured the heathered would be okay because I don't imagine that all dyeing processes were adequate at dyeing the fabric all the way. I also figured that the less dye that was used on a fabric, the less expensive it was. So Alice, being savvy like she is, might have opted for something that was incorrectly or scarcely dyed for the sake of having some color but saving some money. That, that's like the logic in my head. I don't know if that tracks Renaissance historians. You can, you know, confirm or deny, but that's is my thought process because while she's not Alice wouldn't have been lacking for funds because she as an apothecary does fairly well but she would be very careful as to how much she spent on things like clothing boots and and stuff like that so that she had more to put toward bettering her work and bettering her products that's the thought process so she'd use whatever she could find for her clothing. I went with gray because I thought that that would pair fairly nicely 
with the blue and it's not solid black it's not just plain old white gray to me comes across more colorful it also makes a bit more sense because a true deep black would have been harder to achieve and thus would have been more expensive so i'm making her petticoat and the cloak that she will wear when it's colder especially when december rolls around uh those are going to be out of that gray linen as for the cloak i am reusing a pattern that i've used before simplicity 5794 specifically cloak C because it is the simplest one because B has a long point on the hood and A has this shoulder cape extra piece. I don't want or need any of that. I'm doing C and I'm oversizing the hood. That's my plan there. That's what I've got in that regard. And then I'm using the same off-white shift linen from Burnley and Trowbridge for the shift, the apron, and the cap. All that said, now that I've explained everything three times, let's start cutting out patterns. Now I've gotten all of the patterns picked out and cut out at least as far as picking out the pieces that I needed from the envelopes. I've pulled up Morgan Donner's video about making her St. Brigitte coif based on an extant garment, and it seems to have been a fairly common style of cap. So we're just gonna go with that one. I've taken the measurements. All you really have to do is get the circumference of your hairline from the nape of your neck all the way around to the front, whatever the exact placement of the front edge of the cap is going to be for you. I am gonna have a tiny bit of my color visible because of how it has been painted in. It goes fairly high up there. I am planning on doing milkmaid braids underneath though, so it may reduce how much is visible, but you can see the very front of the hairline in most of the versions of this cap. So we're not gonna worry about it. And it's totally personal preference whether or not you wrap the tops of your ears into that or not. I went ahead and wrapped my ears cause I'm probably gonna have the top. I don't like the look of my ears sticking out. So I am gonna keep those wrapped. Now, the other measurement that you need is from the center front of your hairline straight back down to the nape of your neck. And she adds about an inch and a half for the fullness of her hair when it is pinned up. I have also done that because even though my fullness is gonna be up top from the two braids, I still wanna be sure it's gonna fit over that. So I took those two measurements and I followed her drafting. I used the straight edge of a leftover bit of butcher paper, measured up half of the circumference measurement minus one because there's a bit of gathering and then from the corner from the corner where that measurement meets the edge i curved my measuring tape down so that the curve itself measures 14 and a half so this is what i have so far it's not the cleanest curve i will clean that up when it gets cut but this is pretty much the pattern for I'm gonna cut that out and then we will be able to make that mock-up today as well. And for this mock-up, all I'm doing is checking to see if this fullness and this shape when doubly cut and sewn together fits my head the way that I want it to. So we've got that. <laughs> with it. I think for the final version that I'm making out of the linen, I'm going to gather this a little bit tighter because the back is sitting lower than I anticipated. And for some reason, it's not quite wanting to... Now, mind you, my dress form is smaller than me, so it probably will fit differently on me, especially once I have, you know, all the other garments on here that are providing structure and forcing it to sit a certain way. But here we are. I tried to leave the gathering a little bit looser in the sleeve um, so it wasn't too snug, but maybe I will have to gather that completely down. We will see. But yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I gathered down the cuffs as well to fit right about at my forearm just below my elbow so that I'll be able to put 
pull up the cuffs of the sleeves to get them out of the way, and that way it'll hoof this up a bit more and make a really nice effect, especially with the finished linen, because that's gonna be much more light and it'll flow and move a lot more attractively than this very cheap muslin does. But yeah, shift mock-up number two was a roaring success. So now we are going to move on to the cap, the pocket, the skirt, and the cloak hood, because those are all the things that I need to check. I'm not, I should probably explain. I've decided that I'm not going to make a mock-up of, hello, that's a better angle. I decided I'm not gonna make a mock-up of the apron because it's not necessary. I'm only making mock-ups of the pieces that I absolutely need. And then for the pocket, just to make sure I'm happy with the size and have the gist of how it should be made figured out. I'm also making a very short version of the skirt for the mock-up. I only have it coming down to about here so that I can figure out the placement and the method for binding the part of the side scene that I leave open to get to the pockets underneath the skirt. So also so I can check how much I have to gather it down to actually fit my waist because the copy of the pattern that I have doesn't actually have the size that I need for my waist. So I had to estimate and we're gonna go from there. It's a three panel skirt though, so it should be okay. But yeah, let's uh, let's knock out these other mock-ups, shall we? Because my linen should all be getting here today. <laughs> So we have the top of a skirt mock-up with a cheeky, cheeky opening to get to my pockets once they are made. I also have a cap, which I will try on later because I'm wearing a hair bow and I don't feel like pulling it off in order to try on the cap, so that will be for later. I'm gonna add these to my dress form now that they're done. There you go, there's better lighting. I can move on to the bodice and the hood and the pocket. There we are, cap, shift and petticoat slash skirt because the petticoat and the skirt are the exact same pattern just one is going to be slightly bigger around in order to fit over the petticoat so any minor adjustments for that will happen with the final garment and like i said my dress form is smaller than me so the pocket is all the way back here that's not important right now. So we're doing good. We've got a little bit more to go. And I'm feeling quite good about how these are coming out so far. They should be pretty close to complete by their deadline. Oh, and exciting stuff. Look what came. Oh, isn't it beautiful? You're seeing a couple different tones to it right now because I've got sunlight coming into the window and I've got my ring light right there. But this is the beautiful light blue linen that I've gone for. This is the closest to like a woad blue that I could really find without it being too drab. This will be for the bodice and the overskirt. And then this gray linen, it's a slightly heavier weight material. This is a lightweight and this is a medium weight. This will be for the petticoat and the cloak whenever the cloak gets made. I may also use scraps from this for my final pockets. I may work it into linings and other things. I may use a strip of it in the final cap. We will see. Yeah, this is the bulk of the garment. But now I just gotta wait for the post office to come by because they should have the ivory linen uh, for the shift, the cap, the apron, and any other small things that I need. So we are ready to go. Okay, friends, all of my mock-ups are done. I'm gonna try on in just a moment the shift and the bodice together to see where the bodice comes on me because I can't exactly try it on over a normal bra because I'm potentially not going to be wearing a normal bra, seeing as bras weren't a thing. So I might wear pasties just to be safe, but like I'm probably just gonna be wearing the shift and then this isn't gonna be a single layer. This is actually gonna be three layers. The 
lining, the heavyweight interfacing, and then the outer material. Plus, it'll have, you know, the boning channels along the seams, and then two on each side of the front opening. So that'll help to make it tighter and make it open a bit wider. But I just want to see how it's going to fit on me as opposed to the form, because I am not sized like the form. But we've got a hood, we've got a bodice, we've got a shift, we've got a long enough skirt to figure out pocket openings, and there's a cheeky pocket in there. I'm gonna have to reconfigure that opening just a smidge. I had a half inch space around the pocket slit, but I think what I'm actually gonna do is like an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch so that this is not quite so wide, and I need to add an extra half inch at least at the top because the top of the pocket opening is at the top of the pocket, like right up at the edge, and that's not what I want. But I'm pretty happy with how this looks alone. Just like imagine this bit of skirt all the way down. There is, like I said, gonna be an apron as well, but I don't have that made in mock-up form because I didn't feel like it was necessary. An apron is an apron, and an apron is not required for my character, nor is the cloak, but I wanted to see just how big the hood will be. It's close, but I think I'm gonna reduce the seam allowance, and that will do what I need because the pattern pattern is a 5 eighths seam allowance. I think I might reduce it to a quarter inch or 3 eighths just to give it a little bit more size, at least on the center back of the hood. I will leave the seam allowance the same for the rest of the cloak, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I'll go try on these two pieces together in just a moment, but for now, now that I have all three cuts of linen, the gray, the blue, and this is the white from Burnley and Trowbridge, and there's a Roxy climbing on all of it because cats and fabric, am I right? Hi! I am going to throw these in the wash to go ahead and pre-shrink them and remove any sort of manufacturing chemicals and finishing chemicals. Roxy's very interested. Roxy! Oh, okay. Oh, big yawn. And also to pre-shrink so that I'm actually getting the best I can get, at least out of the white, because that's going to get washed the most. I live in Louisiana. It is hot and humid basically every single day, minus like a few weeks in December, January, and February. It's, it's gonna be hot and humid probably for most of the festival. So I anticipate sweating through the shift into the bodice and at least the waistband of the petticoat. So we will see. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-wash those fabrics and try on the shift and the bodice. But as far as this prep work video goes, I think we are done. If this intro has gotten you intrigued enough, stick around. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up, and if you're intrigued enough, hit subscribe so you don't miss a video because I'm gonna have several more videos coming out about how I have made Alice. Thank y'all for watching. Let's begin.